South Korea may be holding out hope for lasting peace with North Korea, but Seoul's hardly putting its weapons away either. In fact, the latest proposed defense budget shows the South's investing heavily in its military capabilities, with a particular focus on this region. And today, let's take a look at the South's lineup of four new weapons and what they mean. First, the one that got the most attention so far, South Korea's newly unveiled submarine-launched ballistic missile. Until now, only six countries have been able to legitimately boast the strategic value of being able to deploy their own SLBMs. China, France, India, Russia, the United Kingdom and the United States. What South Korea celebrated doing earlier this month was conducting an underwater SLBM test from a submarine. Even if North Korea described it as a clumsy product, questioning if it was even a real SLBM, the South plans to deploy its SLBM next year, we understand. Once available in the field, it will offer this country a potent deterrent, as SLBMs are hard to detect, and it remains unclear how far along the North is with its own SLBM development. But what about those other weapons? The South has also developed a supersonic cruise missile, far faster than the new long-range cruise missile tested by North Korea this month, which was analyzed to have traveled slower than a passenger plane. Similar to what Russia and India have developed, South Korea's anti-ship cruise missile will make it very difficult for enemy warships to respond, according to the Defense Ministry here, which is also already eyeing hypersonic missiles. Number three on the list is a long-range air-to-surface missile with a video release showing it fired from an F-4E fighter jet, spreading its own wings and then flying with accuracy to strike a precise target. The goal seems to be that it will be deployed along with the upcoming KF-21 fighter jet by 2028. And then, even though South Korea has played by the rules by not developing nuclear weapons, unlike the North, it has been able to develop enhanced ballistic missiles under lifted restrictions agreed by the US. The fourth weapon unveiled this month, last but certainly not least on our list, is a ballistic missile capable of carrying a three-ton warhead up to 400 kilometers. This is apparently in the final stages of development, and nuclear or not, a warhead of that size would be able to do considerable damage to a nearby neighbor and potentially be able to penetrate North Korea's known underground military facilities. Moreover, South Korea has secured the technology needed for solid fuel rockets, advancing the country's space capabilities, but also potentially adding to its military might going forward. So why are all these advancements being announced now? They're at least partly aimed at South Koreans. Remember, we have a presidential election coming up and the government doesn't want people voting for a rival party on the basis of anxiety about North Korea's still active nuclear ambitions. But it's not just talk either. All these weapons have the capability to strike North Korea and defend against even powerful nearby neighbors if needed. They give South Korea more leverage at the regional dialogue table, both when holding talks with friends like the US and potential enemies like North Korea.